Okay, so I'm starting a buffalo plaid. And I lost my paintbrush. No, I didn't. Okay, I'm starting a buffalo plaid, but this one I'm going to do in orange, kind of like fall colors. And the first thing I am using is painter's tape. Um, I always use the blue ones. I know there's other ones to use, but the blue is my favorite. Now what I do is to get lines evenly around the cup, I put my tape on like this and then I wrap it across the bottom <clears throat> and then back up the side. This helps me, helps my lines be even around the cup. Like that. Now I'm doing this on one of the mason jars. The tape that I'm using is the inch, the one inch size. And I painted my cup black first. I feel it's easier to do the darker color. <laughs> that is not centered. My spray paint always pulls up. I have no idea why. I don't know, no matter how many times I prep these, or how good I prep them, it always does this. Oh, I knocked my water over. I forgot I had that little cup of water sitting right there. Now, what I do is I like to start at the bottom see this. I'm trying to keep it so you guys can see it. I start at the bottom and I line my tape up right on that bottom seam. Now this one, my um, squares aren't going to be 100% even, but that's okay for what I'm doing. <clears throat> so I always eyeball it when I go to the next. So each roll that I do, I go up next, I eyeball it. It's a lot easier for me to do it that way than like I said before in previous videos, I don't like to make my cups 100% perfect because I'm not a machine. And no matter how hard you try, even machines mess up, so. I'm 
Now, my next step is I take my knife and I go around <clears throat> and I cut these right along the lines. This right here will make your one step so much easier. It'll give you a lot more straight lines when you pull your tape. My blade's getting dull. All my lines are cut. I'll grab a little bit more water. I need that little bit just to clean my brush off. Okay, so my next step I did some doing since I painted this all um, black, I am using Vivid Orange. It's just the cheap dollar paint. Um, you can get it at most craft stores. I get mine at Walmart in the craft section. And <clears throat> what I'm going to do is all these squares. Oops, too much there. I'm going to paint them all orange. Now, if you're doing um, the red one like I show at the beginning of this video, you would go, I would still start that one black. I paint the whole cup black and then I go around and do, paint the first set of squares red. And I apologize for my crappy paintbrush. It's on my last paintbrush. I need to go pick up more. I tend to forget to clean them when I get busy. trying to paint these as fast as I can. I don't know how you watch me paint. I do nothing but paint. Now my bottoms on these, I actually leave black because 
when I do my glitter mix of the orange and the black, I will put that on the bottom of my tumbler. Let that dry here for a second. Brush clean and dry if I can find my help oh, pictures. Move that before I dump it over again. It's the last thing I need. Okay, now I use Mod Podge for this. I use just the orange label one. I've had this thing for like ever, so it's the only one I use. I don't use the um, heat gun to dry my paint, but I don't want to sit here and keep going back and forth, back and forth, waiting for paint to dry. <clears throat> so what I do is I paint some squares up with the Mod Podge. Now I put a little extra Mod Podge on each square so that way I don't have to go through and do a second coat scoot over some so it's better. That way I don't have to go through and do a second coat of glitter. Just make sure it's um, as smooth as possible because if it's not, you'll have lumpy glitter and you don't want lumpy glitter. It doesn't look nice. <clears throat> Not wait to go and get some bigger paintbrushes tonight. This one just is not cutting old. Now I'll also leave the link in the description to where I get my glitters. The black glitter that I'm using um, is one that I do sell myself and it does look amazing under epoxy. Enough 
see some of these glitters are super fine and you got to have a decent amount of Mod Podge on there to get them to cover like you'd like them to. Now doing this orange color, this is my first time doing this color for the Buffalo plaid. So I'm not 100% sure how this is going to look when finished, so hopefully awesome. If not, I'll strip it and start over. I just want to get a little bit more coverage with this glitter. I need to get some of those squirt bottles that have um, to put my Mod Podge in, make it easier when I'm doing stuff like this. Now, when I do my first color, I try to um, glitter it as fast as I can because I don't want my glue to dry and hold my tape in place harder then it's just a big pain in the butt and takes longer. To pull it up. Now I tried doing the Mod Podge with the foam brushes and I've noticed with the foam brushes, it just doesn't, it leaves it too streaky for me. And then I can see all the lines and I hate having lines in mine. Glitter, it looks horrible. But I put my Mod Podge on a little thick, so it takes it a little bit longer for it to dry. Um, typically, I do about 10 minutes between each color. I'm not going to do that while I'm showing you guys this. I like to try to make my videos short and quick so you guys can just watch it, <clears throat> get it done and over with, and then get on to making your own creation. I'm also going to show you guys when I get there, which will be the next step, is um, mixing the glitter and how I do that. be a lot easier when I get a bigger brush. It'll move faster also. Now if you leave your Mod Podge bumpy, um, like in clumps like that right there, it will be, um, it'll, pop, it'll bump your glitter up and you don't want that. It will not look good. Now 
Now, I don't like to waste the glitter. Stuff's expensive. But um, I always put a plate or something underneath my, where I'm working to catch it, and then I just dump it back in. See if I can adjust this over just a little bit. Yeah. Okay. All those done. Clean my brush here quickly. I always try to clean my brush in between each glitter coat. Now. Pick this glitter up. Now, the color that I use for the orange is butterscotch. I don't know how good you can see that. This one's from Glitter Heart Company, and that's where I typically get all of my glitters. Um, I do use some Walmart glitters. Um, I don't really do any of the craft store glitters. Now, the first ones that you're going to want to pull off are the sideways ones. And pull slowly because if your glitter is starting to or your glue is starting to dry in any of those spots it's going to um, start to pull it up and you don't want that I don't even know how much I sanded this cup. And it's my spray paint still pulling off a bit. Okay, so my next step is going to be mixing my orange and my black. Now when I do this, I do half and half, <coughs> and I use these little measuring medicine measuring cups. Um, I always measure by drams, I have no idea why, but I put about two drams of black now I'm not going to use all this at once I so I'll save it for the next one that I do and then I put the two drams of orange in oh look there's my good paintbrush and I just mix it up really, really, really good. Okay, so next step is this is the one that you're gonna wanna be glittering with next.
Now all the free spaces that you have right now. You're going to want to put your mix on. The mix is also what I put on the bottom of the tumbler. Now when I do, to keep the lines nice and smooth, I actually take my brush and I push the glue up to a line like this and that helps me keep a nice straight line for my glitter. This one's gonna be pretty. Yes, this one's gonna be super pretty. Just figure out what kind of design I'm gonna put on it next. Go around and make sure you get all those blank spots. Now, for our brushes, um, I know somebody's going to end up asking. I just buy the cheap packs that I find at Walmart. I don't use the expensive brushes and I don't use. Um, I did see some people say that they prefer using makeup brushes. Um, I've tried using makeup brushes. I'm not a huge fan of them. I feel like the texture of them is a lot different than a paintbrush. And they just don't work for me. But it's all about your preference and what you like using. And this is my first time doing this to one of the mason jars. I had one sitting, I have a couple of these sitting around and wasn't sure what to do with them. Watermelon cups stop selling for right now. I guess they're not very popular for fall, so. <clears throat> I figured I found this really cute fall design that I want to put on this, I think, but we'll see. We'll see what the outcome will be to this. ready to peel up your next colors <clears throat> or your next tape sorry um, you're gonna pull up the ones in the middle there between the oranges because that's going to be your mixed glitter also Now I'm probably going to have to make a couple of these videos because I know not all of you are going to want to use like a um, orange or a red and that way it won't be as confusing.
But when the rule of thumb is though, when you're making these, you wanna make sure none of your solid colors touch. So your mixed colors are always, your mix is always going to go in between. And I like doing certain ones um, where some of my mixed colors, like since my main color is orange on this one, I like to do it so my, my orange is bigger than the black. That's the way it turned out on my red one too. My red sections were bigger than my black sections. <clears throat> do and then I'll show you the next spot that you're gonna want to pull up So next step, let's get my brush down quick. Now all the ones that are touching orange, you pull those out. And this is where when you did the cutting, that it actually comes into play a lot. So you're gonna wanna peel up every other one All these ones are going to end up being your mix again. I have to keep looking up and checking to make sure I'm still in the view of the camera. Tutorials or something new I'm doing and I'm trying to get used to explaining my steps as I'm doing them. Okay, I'll go 
almost done. <clears throat> go through and paint or glue put glue on all of those now I know I'll have somebody ask about using double-sided tape to do these um, I don't know if it'll work and if it does I don't know how well it will work um, I don't use double-sided tape and I've never even tried to use double-sided tape on any of this. If you do do this with double-sided tape, I would love to see the outcome <clears throat> and the process that you use. I try to stick with the I don't know if you want to call them basics when doing this because I don't have any craft stores locally at all. Um, <clears throat> the only thing I have is a Walmart and our craft section is just not, it's not the greatest. I used to crochet all the time and I got really discouraged when they went through and we did our craft section and they made they made the yarn section a lot smaller, like a quarter of the size that it was. So and my closest craft store is a two hour drive. So I do a lot of online ordering. Which I don't mind doing, but when I order online, I try to stick with buying from other small businesses. So I get a lot of my glitter from small businesses. Um, I mainly order just from glitter heart company I have tried another company it is called myglitteraddiction.com um, they have really good prices on glitter also I like to use glitter heart company because Melissa has amazing fast shipping she's when they get your order you get an email in like the first 24 hours saying that your order is packed, is shipped, which is awesome. Oops, that had a little bit of wet paint right there. Oh my god, that all, I guess not. I most likely won't post a finished picture of this one with this video unless it'll let me do it in the comments. I know it's, um, tis the season where this is a very popular design right now and I want to be able to get you guys a good, um, tutorial out quickly.
Next step, <clears throat> let's start on the other side. So you hear why that stuff dries just a tad bit. Now all your other spots you're gonna wanna pick up. And now all these spots are going to be your black. husband goes to work and he comes home he's like do you know there was a piece of glitter on my face our guys at work tend to point it out to him but I told him all good things are covered in glitter so he didn't get it that's okay. Oh, this one's gonna be so pretty. Next one you're doing is your black or your other solid color and you're going to want to go around <clears throat> paint all those spots up or paint them, glue all your spots up, your squares. Now on this spot, I go, try to go a lot, a little bit slower, just because I want my lines to stay as perfect as possible. It's looking beautiful. Yep, this one will be perfect. Very excited. I would say I hope I get to make like a thousand of these, but I think after the tenth one I might get a little bored. They're so nice to see how when you do them with different colors, how they turn out and how pretty they end up being. I was iffy about this one at first, 
but with these colors, but they're very um, fallish. I'm thinking this is gonna have to get a really pretty thankful type design on it. Now I do recommend when, after you glitter these, when using the Mod Podge, I let them dry for about 24 hours before I do anything, just because I want to make sure it's good and set before it goes under epoxy. to glitter the top to this mason jar so it doesn't look awkward if um, you're wondering where I got the mason jar from I actually got it from the mason jars I got them from the stainless steel depot right now that's where I get all of my tumblers <clears throat> I normally buy stuff by the case unless it's something like the mason jars unless I have a lot of these selling but I've only sold a few of them so I have not bought a case of these yet and I think they have really good deals on their cases um, sometimes you can build your own case and get a discount and they do free shipping a lot of free shipping I just did a case and got free shipping on a whole case and they are really good quality tumblers too I've never had any um, complaints on them and I did notice I did a test to see and these actually held ice longer than the Ozarks And I have not used any Yetis. Um, I think with Yeti, you're just paying for the name. They're just as good as all the others, in my opinion. I know some people prefer the Yetis. Where's left? Maybe I should just do the bottom of this black. All the choices, I don't know. are really good and straight I will clean the rim up but I won't do that until after I epoxy yep I think this one I will do the mix on the bottom
ever find yourself in a really awkward position holding a cup in your hand? And you're kind of like, oh, I don't know how to move next. I hate that. I love these mason jars, though. They're so um, cute and versatile, and they come with a stainless steel straw. that came out perfect so I will let this dry overnight my um my first coat of epoxy will be on go on this not tomorrow but um I will do a flood coat um I'll end up mixing up a whole one of my medicine cups so I'll do four drams of A and four drams of B and I will put that whole thing on here but I will a couple more times pat this off to get all the loose glitter off of it if you guys have any questions please feel free to either email me um, post comments in the comment section um, when you post comments in the comment section, if you have a question about somebody, something, I can, you can almost guarantee somebody else has a question about it also. So, <clears throat> you're helping, if you, blah, I can't even talk today. If you post your comments in the comment section, then that helps. You could be helping somebody else too. Um, please hit the subscribe button. I have a ton of stuff coming in the next week for tutorials, I'll be doing a wood grain and I'll also be doing a Milky Way. So please get ready for those ones. Thank you guys. Please don't forget to hit the subscribe button.